Today on The Grill, we did manage to host, uh, that is Dr. David Mazukanda, who is the director in the Faculty of Commerce uh, School of Management from the University of Zimbabwe, where we did uh, touch on issues to deal with investment in Africa uh, by China. China has set aside $60 billion uh, for investment in Africa. How can Zimbabwe tap into that, and what does Zimbabwe need to do to benefit from it uh, greatly, uh, just like many other African countries? And we sought to find clarity as uh, Dr. Mazikanda uh, from the University of Zimbabwe, together with uh, the uh, Confederation of Zimbabwe Industries, shall be hosting a workshop on the 15th of November, uh, where they'll be hosting uh, it in, in with greater uh, focus on uh, how they can tap into the investment uh, by China into Africa. Dr. Mazikanda, thank you very much for joining us uh, in today's edition of uh, The Grill. Thank you very much. Zimbabwe and China do enjoy uh, cordial relations that date back uh, to uh, the liberation struggle. And Zimbabwe are perceived to be the pioneers of the Look East policy. And uh, China having set aside $60 billion for investment in Africa, how can Zimbabwe uh, tap into this? Okay, thank you very much. So from, from our own perspective, from uh, the academic perspective, uh, we have been undertaking research um, in those key areas that we feel that uh, uh, you know we, we can have a comparative advantage and uh, those areas uh, have to do for instance in the area of agriculture in the area of um, uh, mining and in the area of uh, tourism those are the areas that we strongly feel that as a country we have got comparative uh, advantage also from a research perspective we have been uh, uh, trying to understand what, what China has done in other countries so that we can learn from those countries in terms of the policies uh, that uh, those countries have done, how successful those policies have been uh, so that we can also you know, adapt some of the policies that they've put in place uh, so that uh, at the end of the day, at the end of this workshop, uh, we are going to then make a recommendation to uh, the respective ministries so that they, you know, they craft the policies, uh, so that you know those policies will then enable us to have a bigger chunk of that uh, 60 billion. Currently, we feel that maybe we have not really had much, um, because if you look at the the Conf Chinese confederations in Zimbabwe, we have some that are state-owned, sort of those 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 that are owned by the Chinese government. Those are the ones that have been active. So, for instance, all the the major part of the investments that have taken place in Zimbabwe, like uh, Victoria Falls Airport, Harare Airport, uh, Kariba South Extension, Mwanke, uh, they have by and large been done by state-owned uh, entities. However, there is a big chunk of Chinese businesses who are coming from the private sector that we also need to uh, tap into. Um, hence, this particular workshop, we are also looking at inviting those um, you know big Chinese delegations or companies that are currently in Zimbabwe to also learn from them what has been their experiences working in Zimbabwe, uh, what 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 are they recommending, uh, so that when we come up with this policy at the end of this workshop, uh, we we you know we are hoping that it should be a, a very good policy so that the government is uh, then putting forward uh, what we call an informed policy that will then be successful and enable us to have access to the bigger chunk of this $60 billion that have been made available by China. Having said that, uh, uh, Dr. Matsukanda, there's been great concern, especially from other spheres of, uh, of, 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 of those who have been following the investment in China and Africa, uh, that uh, uh, China's uh, uh, investment policy has been, been favorable. How can you allay these fears? Yeah. Well, uh, first of all, um, when, whenever you do not have international competitive bidding, uh, it presents problems. Mm -hmm. uh, so by virtue of the fact that we're just going to China and trying to have deals in China, it's not a very good uh, approach generally. We are supposed to have a situation where there should be international competitive bidding, which unfortunately we are not deriving. So the, the negative aspect of it is that whereas a project uh, that would probably cost 300 million as an example, you might end up having that project costing three, uh, four, five hundred million dollars because there was no competitive um, bidding. So that's that's a major drawback. 
so among the things that always have to be recommended is even if we are talking about bilateral relations uh, there should be competi competition in China in the selection of those companies that we are actually doing business with as opposed to a situation where you know a company in China will just come in and say you know we are offering you this particular project at such a, a price um, as a country I think we should also have uh, expertise in terms of uh, pricing so that um, for instance if we are looking at the uh, expansion at the Arare airport we should have a pretty good idea that in the event that we had gone for international bidding how much would that work have costed us and how much is it costing us you know working with China that gives us the opportunity to be able to negotiate uh, so I think it's those things that uh, obviously we need to be addressed and a whole host of other factors uh, that uh, we are hoping that uh, by having this close relationship between uh, the academia, the public sector, and the private sector, I think as a country, you know, we are pretty sure that we can come up with uh, something that benefits the country overall. And finally, in conclusion, Dr. Matsikanda, tell us more about the workshop and when it will be taking place. The workshop is taking place uh, next week, Thursday, uh, the 15th of November. Uh, the workshop will be taking place at uh, the University of Zimbabwe, uh, the Humanities Lecture Theatre 300 is taking place from 8 o'clock in the morning until around about 2 o'clock. Lunch is provided. Um, it's for free, so um, you know people don't have to worry about uh, paying for such uh, conferences. Um, we are inviting, well, it's predominantly CZI workshop, as you can appreciate, but we are hoping that there will be a big contingency from the Chinese uh, uh, community uh, based in Zimbabwe, along with the uh, acting Chinese ambassador, we are hoping that there will be top government representation, in particular the Minister of Industry and, and, and uh, Technology, uh, also the Minister of Finance. Um, uh, but because the academia has been in, in invited or involved, we are also hoping that there will be a big contingency of uh, uh, people from all the universities in Zimbabwe, and those invitations have already been extended to all the universities in Zimbabwe so that they can you know, come in and contribute. Uh, because at the end of the day, uh, when you think of it, I mean, Zimbabwe uh, has got one of the highest lit literacy rates in Africa. So there is quite a lot of uh, brain power out there, which we think we can tap into uh, for free uh, and be able to assist our government in coming up with those uh, policies that you know overall they should uh, benefit uh, the country. As you can appreciate, uh, the president has got uh, his uh, 2030 vision, uh, which in essence is meant to see all of us uh, enjoy a prosperous life, a better standard of living, better jobs or better quality jobs. Mm -hmm. uh, but all these things, obviously, they require all of us to work hard towards attainment of that vision. Dr. Uh, David Matsikanda, I must thank you very much for joining us uh, on the program. Thank you very much. We've been talking there to Dr. David Matsikanda, who is the director in the Faculty of Commerce uh, School of Management from the University of Zimbabwe, as we were looking at how Zimbabwe can tap into the $60 billion investment for Africa set by China. I certainly hope you did enjoy the program.